Greetings and welcome to Jeffrey Films. This 1999 movie was written by John Logan, who did Gladiator, Skyfall, Star Trek Nemesis, The Last Samurai. It was directed by Louis Morneau, who did Carnosaur 2. I see some discrepancies there. It's also starring Lou Diamond Phillips and Dina Mayer. So let's review Bats. This movie starts out in Texas, where Quinn brings this girl he likes to the shitty location to fool around, and she's onto him, and something touches his hand, so he goes outside into his trunk to get a few beers. Maybe that will lighten her up, I guess. And then, when the train comes by, the bats take this opportunity to attack. I don't know why they go through the window or through the roof when we've clearly established the side window is open. Next, we're inside a cave with Dr. Sheila Casper, who's checking out some bats with her assistant on comms. And then a helicopter comes by, so she rushes out and meets Dr. Toby Hodge from the CDC in Atlanta, and he needs her to come to Texas. Kind of biological emergency. Bats, Dr. Casper. Bats. We meet Sheriff Emmett, who drives Sheila into town to see the body of Quint. Now, maybe it's bad editing, but I personally think the sheriff is a bat. He's so thirsty at the sight of blood, he drinks from his cup three times in eight seconds. You guys just, you just keep doing what you're doing. The external interior jugulars have been severed down to the common carotid on the right side of the median. Uh, Sheila, I'm gonna need your confirmation now. She identifies a tooth but says that it's impossible. That kind of bat eats fruit. And then they show her some other attacks that's been happening in the last six days on animals. We meet Dr. Alexander McNabb, who's played by Bob Gunton. Recently from Daredevil, but was Captain Maxwell of the USS Phoenix, a beautiful Nebula-class starship in TNG. He says he brought two large bats from Indonesia for test subjects, and he's been experimenting on something virus-based. She agrees to help, and the sheriff gets a call, and they head out and find another body. She says the virus must be affecting other bats, because no way could two bats do this. We learned that the virus can't infect humans, but that the doctor made them more intelligent. They work together, and they'll eat almost anything. And then he defends it. I made them omnivorous. Put my bats anywhere in the world and they will feed. Jimmy somehow in his spare time has created a graph of the bats and their migration and how they'll take over the world. They head out into the field and they set up these nets outside of a cave and there's a running joke that the nets feel like nylons but we never actually see whether the nets work. The sheriff also gives her a comforting thought. My mommy used to say when the moon was red like it is tonight that there was blood on the moon meant somebody's gonna get killed. Sheriff, if you're trying to put me at ease, it's not working. They bond a little bit, she tells them about bats, and then her sensors go off, and she says there's too many of them. So they make a run for the truck, and they hide in there, and they call Jimmy the deputy to come help them. But the bats are everywhere, covering the truck, breaking through, and disabling the engines. Eventually the sheriff shoots the window, and puts a hole in it. <laughs> Backup arrives and then the bats leave for no reason. There wasn't even a shot fired. And then they catch a bat, a living bat, and the practical on this is crazy. Jimmy wants to go to the Arctic because the bats hate the cold. And then we see the two genetically engineered bats still on a roof. And the sheriff takes a shot at them and they fly off. We get some sexual undertones as the doctor puts a tracker on her bat. And when I open the cage, I want you to reach in and grab them by the neck and wings. Are you crazy? Try to be gentle, but firm. Think I can handle that? I'm sure you can, Emmett. Okay, you ready? The genetically engineered twin bats know what's going on and they take that bat out and rip it apart. These are pretty smart bats. Hodge of the CDC has ordered some reinforcements and Jimmy has some story device graphics telling us the bats are migrating into town, but it's really just guesswork bullshit. It's a bad night for laundry lady. Also, I assume this baby in the crib is going to get killed because it's pretty ugly. Yep, there's a bat in that crib. Also, the townspeople are getting attacked and killed. Sheila can hear their echolocation as they swarm into town. I mean, practical bats are pretty hilarious, but CGI probably would have been terrible. And probably the best way to defend yourself against these bats seems to be flapping your arms around and spinning. The sheriff is taking out some bats from his defensible position. These bats look so big that this attack by the twins looks like rape. And why do they pause for dramatic effect? Is it wrong that I think they need to get Batman in here? 
The only way to deal with these bats is to get an even larger bat. It's a shame no one has a sword. Now the military arrives and Sheila gives her necklace to Hodge as he's lying there dead. Why? You weren't even close. Now they have 48 hours before the military is going to bomb every cave and possibly the town. They're going to use an infrared satellite to identify where the bats are. Then they fortify a school for some reason. Then we're subjected to opera music. I mean, know your audience, guys. <laughs> Sheila says when the temperatures drop, bats hibernate, and if it gets colder, they die. The military is going to drop off some equipment for them. I hope it's not important. The satellites show the bats been hiding in Black Rock Mine, so they're going to put on some armor and head in there and freeze the bastards. We find out the government's been experimenting on bats for the last decade, trying to make them into a weapon, but now they're going to end it. They also have a lot of machines there and they're making a lot of noise, so naturally, the bats are going to come on and attack and kill them. Ah! McCabe tells Sheila that her plan won't work, and that he called the bats there, and then the power goes out. He's pretty crazy. They battle them and the camera's all over the place, but I guess that's the only way to make rubber bats that are placed in one spot look frightening. Jimmy uses a blowtorch and takes out some of them. Get out of here! Yeah! We get bat cams a lot, but not actually from the direction the bats are coming from, so that's kind of odd. They manage to electrify their defenses when the generator's turned on and fry some bats. McNabb heads outside and he sees the two bats sitting in a tree. Gunshots scare them off, but it seems to attract the other bats. And McNabb gets taken out. Come to me. The next day they get to the mine and they manage to get a hold of the Major and call him. And he says an airstrike is happening in 62 minutes. They think that they can turn on the machine, but he says he's not going to call off that airstrike. So they're going to go anyways. They got plenty of time. They're pretty convinced the bomb would only scatter them, so their plan is to head into the tunnels, turn on the freezing machine, seal the entrances. Why would the infrared satellite actually detect bats inside of a cave? I'm not sure they're that powerful. Well, they get in there and they fall through a floor. Are you alright? Are you alright? Are you kidding me? I am not up to my chest in bat shit. I'm afraid you are, Sheriff. Woo! Sheila thinks there's millions of them, and they find the machine, but they need to search the bodies to find the key to turn it on. They eventually do, and they leave. But before they can leave, the twins wake up. The sheriff gets attacked, and I'm like, dude, you are fully covered in armor. This should not be hurting you at all. She manages to flare one to death, and then we get electrifying explosions everywhere. Shoot it! Shit! The bats wake up, but Sheila and the sheriff are seemingly outrunning them. They drop a lift, which actually slows down the bats, and they finally do manage to escape, and Jimmy blows up the mine entrance. And it looks like most of the mine. Maybe there were multiple entrances. And then he manages to call the Major and tell him to call off the airstrike. And the Major does, even though he would listen to them earlier. I guess because it's sealed? Inside the mine, we see the machine is putting the little guys to sleep, even though they kind of flew far away from that entrance, so it's going to take a while. And then we see a little bat that survived, but the truck takes care of it. Bats is a pretty formulaic movie, but it's missing some of the formula, but impressive for its budget. It was only 5.25 million, and it made 10.2 million, so it's not a complete loss. A television sequel in 2007 was made for the sci-fi network called Bats Human Harvest, but it doesn't have Dina in it, so really, is it worth watching? The bats themselves were a combination of computer animation and animatronics, but they also did bring in some bats from Indonesia. I think they should have shown some of the experiments and McNabb like making the bats smarter and we could have seen some of that to give it a little more grounding. 
In the end, I don't think many critics were very favorable to this movie, and for good reason. It's not that great. I mean, it has no sex appeal to it, even though it's got Dina Mayer in it. They could have done something with that between her and Lundi and Phillips. Um, there's no, like, actual scariness to it. There's no actual creepiness to it, even though they've got a lot of, like, bat creepily slowly moving things. They just didn't build suspense well enough. Maybe it's because the director did Carnosaur 2. Ciao, fratello, come va? <laughs> But having a writer like John Logan on there who's done such great work, it's kind of surprising that the movie turned out the way it did. Well, you know, directors don't actually have to listen to scripts. And it's an entirely watchable movie. I've seen much worse. This movie didn't hurt my brain at all, and there were some pretty laughable parts at it. So, as always, you know, check it out if you want. I'm not gonna force you. And thanks for watching.